Back in November, we welcomed a new nonprofit organization to the show, the Autism Awareness Group. Dean and Delise Segberg are the founders, and as I spoke with them on the show, I asked them what it was like to live with autism, a question they both chuckled at. Well, that's not exactly the response I was going for, and after the interview was over and the show was wrapped, we asked if we could dig into that answer a little deeper. They've been kind enough to open their life to us and give us a small glimpse of what life with autism is like. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. This is Drew Segberg's sixth birthday. It's a special occasion and he gets the works. Pizza, cake, a party, and presents. Like most six-year-olds, all this is pretty exciting. But for Drew, something like this could also be overwhelming. He was diagnosed with autism at age two. That's when the lights went out. He got really sick. Uh, a week after he got his two-year-old vaccinations and, and that was shortly thereafter. That was when his speech disappeared and, and we call it the light went off, the light shut off. Autism is a developmental disorder that affects the brain's normal development of social and communication skills. There's no known cause of autism. The latest research is showing genetic evidence, but one earlier study that's since been disproved blamed the measles, mumps and rubella vaccination. But this theory is still commonly believed to have some merit in the autism community. The spectrum of symptoms is so wide that autism has become an umbrella word that a number of social disorders fall under. Every person is unique and each can experience a completely different set of symptoms. Mostly for Drew, it means exceptionally hyperactive behavior, a variety of sensory issues and consequential tantrums because of too much noise, crowds or lights. Dealing with autism is like going on a roller coaster ride. You never know if it's going to be an easy ride that day or if it's going to be a really bad ride. To deal with these battles, most families employ therapists. Drew has four. The first two are speech therapists. Drew is behind his neurotypical kindergarten classmates in terms of speech and fine motor skills. Two years ago, he wasn't making any sounds at all. He started working with the Picture Identification Communication System, or PECS for short. The program allows kids to rip and place Velcro pictures onto dialogue strips to communicate basic wants and needs. Now we're getting two word sentences, um, the odd time longer than that. He's reciting different poems and different things like that. Yeah. Um, the speech has taught him to be able to function socially too. His teacher uses them to communicate with him as well. In kindergarten they can't read, most kids can't read, so visual supports are important for them to gain understanding and that's especially important for Drew to help him understand and comprehend what's what's going on. Drew is completing the same curriculum as the other kids in his class just with an educational assistant. She ensures Drew is getting exactly what he needs from the exercises and tries to keep him focused. We try and stay with the rest of the kids as much as possible. Um, if we do need a little quiet we'll just come back here where it's a little quieter and there isn't as many distractions so that's the biggest thing if we're working on something that we really want to concentrate on is just getting away from the noise and all of the distractions. Fine motor, yeah, holding that pencil, getting at that printing, learning his name, and I think he's almost there this week. We've had a great week with his name, so I think that'll all come. Drew has found a great love for books. He's already reading some words, and he's working on pre-literacy and early numeracy skills, although his fine motor skills will hold him back from writing and coloring as fast as his peers. As his language abilities develop, so do his social skills. At school, he's part of an integrated play group where they teach turn-taking and proper interaction lessons. It's like we're unlocking all of these little doors every day and, and I can't wait to see what's going to come out because he's amazing. He's so smart. Inside a kindergarten classroom, Drew can really blend in. Every kid here has different strengths and weaknesses and levels of learning and social skills. It's important for the students to be aware of others' needs. Um, and that's one way they get it. They notice that Drew is a little different and um, we have to teach them why. It amazes me to see the other kids, just the way they treat him, because I think as adults we need to be more like that, more accepting, more, yeah, not afraid of people that do things different or, they're not even, I don't notice the noises he makes or anything until we're in the library with other grades and the other kids are stopping and looking, but these guys just, he's just Drew. We've had many people when we go to pick them up at school, um, some, other, some other parents will go, oh, this is Drew. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not a physical thing. It's not like a Down syndrome or uh, he doesn't have crutches or anything like that, right? Like it, or a wheelchair. It's, it's not a physical thing, so they're, it's pretty tough. Even though autism isn't a physical disability, it manifests in many visible ways, such as tantrums and odd behaviors. This is where an occupational therapist is useful in the Segberg household. 
Their therapies help us to help Drew function in a world that he doesn't fully understand and that we don't understand his world and where he's coming from. They've stepped in and they've taught us that, you know what, Drew can't handle when his clothes are wet. They have to come off because that texture on his body um, causes some kind of a reaction with him that he just yeah. can't handle. Or, or why, why is our son not so much anymore, but why did he used to, he used to love to play in cat litter? It was a <laughs> texture thing. It felt, they, yeah. and they made us realize, you know, that that's, he's seeking that out. He's seeking that particular sensation in his hands. This is why parents find soothing objects for their kids to relax with, like chewing tubes, music, or in Drew's case, his cat or his iPad. If you put autism in, in iTunes, the apps that pop up just for autism are unbelievable. Different games and, and kids, yeah. Kids in general just take to that thing that, you know, the, the touch so quickly and they pick it up so fast and he's playing games on For there. For a child and... that has fine motor skill problems, oh. to be able to just use yeah. their finger and flip through makes it so much easier for yeah. them. This has been a big relief for the Segbergs. They say, yes, it's an expense. An iPad doesn't run cheap, but it has given them a freedom that they only dreamed of before. It's allowed us the opportunity to go out and have supper. Yeah, to a restaurant um, as a family. If we're in, let's say, West Edmonton Mall, which can be an autism nightmare from mm -hmm. sensory overload. I mean, it's, it's... Too many people, too loud, crowds. Too bright, lots of uh, just distractions Music. everywhere. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll take the iPod along, give him, he's got these nice set of earphones and he puts them on and, and he's in his own world. With Drew delightfully distracted and calmed by the sureness of his games or the comedy of a familiar movie, the Segbergs can feel like a typical family again. And it helps him, and yeah. it, it adjusts him so that he's not screaming and, and having tantrums. Because before, it was either he'd be bolting through West Edmonton Mall and you tried to be running after him and keeping up with him, yeah. um, or he'd be throwing a complete tantrum where he could be stripping his clothes off, laying in the middle of the mall, mm -hmm. to kicking you, biting you. To going from that extreme to now... He looks typical. He looks like another kid in West Edmonton Mall. He looks Mall. like a spoiled kid with an iPod. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a, yeah. We look like rich people because this kid's got his, yeah an iPod and he's walking through the mall. So.